one other tie today, Canvey Island. That's where Brighton had to go, right into the heart of London's Dockland. And here is George Gavin with a report on what happened. There's nothing like taking some fresh air before a big game. And this is the biggest match in Canvey Island's history. Canvey Island lies on the Thames, and in fact, the river looks quite calm today. But in 1953, it broke through the sea wall here. Disastrous floods flooded the entire area, and Canvey Island FC was flooded itself and lost all their records. But today, all they want to do is bury the hopes of Brighton in the FA Cup. Canvey Island had never before reached the first round of the FA Cup. In fact, they'd never played league opposition before. The day had begun just after breakfast with the Brighton kit man, Jock Riddell, arriving to lay out the Division Two side's strip. There was marginally more space in the Canvey Island dressing room. The local fire brigade gave the ground a final check. The park laying ground normally holds about 400. Ten times that many were expected today. And a rare police presence was required. But everyone was expecting to have a day out to enjoy, including former Brighton star and now the Canvey keeper, John Keeley. John, the day's finally arrived, hasn't it? Uh, what's it going to be like? Well, hopefully, uh, as we said all along, that everyone just enjoys a day. Uh, obviously, it's going to be the biggest day on Canvey, and uh, hopefully we can just put up a good performance. Particularly important for you as well, isn't it? Uh, are you still friendly with the Brighton boys? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, I've still got lots of friends down here. Friends, like, half my house is full out with them. But, um, no, I, was, uh, I did all right down there, and... I enjoyed my time there, so I was just looking forward to this game. Brighton, Cup winners in 1983, arrived an hour before the kickoff. They can't be blamed for not knowing the route to the dressing room, and they were in for a shock when they got there. Not all the Brighton squad could fit in, and manager Liam Brady had to take his first major decision of the day. All right, the lads are not playing until you get the house. Go have a look at Take a bit of room. Brighton's assistant boss, Jerry Ryan, played in the 1983 Cup final at Wembley, but he was undaunted by coming to Canvey. Yeah, I know, but uh, cup runs all start at places like this, you know. It's, it's uh, played at plenty of places like this in my career, you know, starting out. And, so it doesn't really hold that many first me. How tricky is today's game? Well, every game's got to be won, you know, and uh, basically if you go, go in any game with the wrong attitude, you can get turned over. I mean, and today we've made that very clear to the boys. Your attitude's got to be right or anybody can beat you. If we can play up to our potential, then I think we've got a fair chance. It's the biggest thing in history for Canvey Sport. Put them in the, on the map for history of sport, Canvey, definitely. I must watch me white stilettos don't get stuck in the mud, though, when I get on the pitch and do me streak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, it's the greatest day we've had over here so far, and I'm sure we're going to get some really big days. We're going to win today, without a doubt. Yeah. Brighton could hardly be relishing the prospect of playing at Park Lane. They'd gone out of the first hurdle last year to Kingstonian. But it was the league side who drew first blood after 16 minutes. Dean Wilkins, brother of Ray, takes the free kick, and former Tottenham trainee Junior McDougald does the rest. But Canvey weren't going to have the day of their lives spoiled, and they showed tremendous character to come back after 33 minutes. Coming up, a superb header by Steve Porter, who was a teacher during the week. Five minutes later, though, Brighton were ahead again. Some poor non-league defending lets in Junior McDougall for his and Brighton's second goal. His boots were hot, so he wasn't going to leave any behind. Fans were using every vantage point to watch the game. And Brighton could have finished the game off in the first half. When the clear chance arrives, it's at the feet of Junior McDougald again. But the glory and the hat-trick opportunity goes astray. It wasn't to be for McDougald, but the tremendous Canvey fans were rewarded by an equaliser nine minutes from the end. Alan Brett providing the finish. In fact, Canvey could have won the game, with substitute Alan Harding making a break and causing panic in the Brighton defence. It finished all square. Canvey 2, Brighton 2. 
to see it's difficult for them to come down on our pitch. You know, it's not what they're used to. Facilities are, are all full compared to you know what they're used to. They've got to raise their game, whereas we haven't. We're on you know we're on top of our game. And, you know, in front of 4,000 people, we don't play in front of that every week, and it's easy for us to get motivated for a game like that. Not so easy for them. So. Yeah, it was hard, but uh, it was enjoyable. What did you think of the game as a whole? You had to come back twice, so it was a gritty performance by Canvey, wasn't it? Yeah, we, we've got no prima donnas down here. Everyone knuckles down, gets on with it, and uh, we just fight to the death. And we knew, and we knew, we, was gonna, uh, knew we could get a goal back because we've always scored goals, and uh, it was down to us, and we just battled and battled, and it came near the end, so it was great. We showed a lot of character, and uh, I knew we would always. We instill that the game lasts for 90 minutes, and... Uh, we had a go and it was great. You're in the second round draw at the very least, so uh, how do you feel about that? Oh, it's brilliant. Uh, it's like a dream, really, for everyone involved in the club. We, um, we've come from the Essex Senior League and we've gone up through two divisions now and we're up third in our league and we just keep trying to improve this. And this is obviously a great day for Canvey Island everywhere, not just the football club. We know these, this kind of pitch and... Uh, and the environment you come to is, is, is a leveller, it evens things out. But the players battled. I felt we were in control for long periods of the game and probably missed a chance to kill the game off uh, early in the second half to make it 3-1. That would have been a hat-trick, wouldn't it? It would have been a nice hat-trick for McDougal, yeah. Um, but I think it was a lot to do with the pitch, just bubbled up. And uh, well, all credit to Canby then, they just kept coming at us and uh, got the ball into our box. I was disappointed to see the second goal because we had plenty of bodies there. And, Somebody lost uh, his marker and, uh, and he finished up knocking it in the net. So I was a little bit disappointed about that. But as I say, this time last year we were out and uh, I fancy our chances down at the Goldstone. Yes, I'm not surprised to see him smiling. That really is a result from Brighton's point of view. A lot of people were looking to that one today to produce a surprise. We've got the draw coming up for the second round at uh, half past six.